hello everyone in this video tutorial we will be looking at reducing and enlarging formulas and so like we talked about in class if you took a look at the United States Pharmacopoeia National Formulary you will find out that the official formulas are typically based on a specified quantity normally it's a thousand ml or a thousand grams and even if you looked in the literature you will come across formulas that are based on a specified quantity. Now, for you as a pharmacist, what typically happens is you would end up compounding preparations um, with a final quantity that could be different from what is specified in your formula or in your formulation record. And so for you then, you should be able to reduce the formula to um, your specified quantity or enlarge the formula as the case may be even if you ended up in industry okay so it's kind of like your grandma's recipe which was designed for a family of eight and now you need it just for two people or four people you definitely are going to be needing less ingredients in that case and so as it turns out normally i like to say you use a two-step process to achieve your goal of knowing exactly how much you need if you wanted to reduce or enlarge your formula. So the first thing is to determine what I call the factor. Now this factor is actually going to let you know, for example, whether you're going to be scaling up or whether you're going to be reducing down. And so how you obtain this factor is you will divide the quantity of formula desired. That would be the quantity of your compounded preparation and you divide that by the quantity of the formula given. That would be the amount specified in your formula or in your formulation record. So if you had a factor that was greater than one, it would represent a multiple of the formula. So basically you're scaling up the formula, you're making more, and so you need more amounts of each ingredient than you would in your formula. Now, if you had a factor less than one, obviously that tells you, for example, that you're going to be reducing the formula, you're scaling it down, and so basically you need less amount of each ingredient than what is specified in your formula, okay? Now, in your step two, you will simply multiply the quantity of each ingredient in the formula by that factor. And so at the end of the day, you end up with the exact amounts that you need for each ingredient um, depending on whether you're going to be reducing the formula or enlarging the formula. So let's look at an example of how you would actually apply this kind of uh, steps. And then we'll look at some other examples of actual formula or formulations that we could enlarge or reduce. So in this example, it says if you have a formula for a thousand ml, which contains six grams of a drug, how many grams of the drug are needed to prepare 60 milliliters of the formula? So this is relatively simple example. You could actually just use proportion, but what you want to do is walk through the steps of how you apply those two steps. Okay. And so because your final quantity or the quantity of your preparation is 60 ml compared to what is in your formulation record which is a thousand ml basically it tells you that you are preparing less and so you need lower amounts or smaller amounts of the quantities of each ingredient so step one let's determine the factor is the quantity of the formula desired divided by the quantity of formula given and in our example the quantity of formula desired is 60 and the quantity of formula given is a thousand. So we end up with a factor of 0 0.06. So it's less than one. We know we are going to be scaling down. Step two, we basically multiply the quantity of the drug in there, which is six grams by this formula zero by the factor 0 0.06. And that gives you 0 0.36 grams. So, Whereas you need that 6 grams for a 1,000 ml specified in your formula, in your particular preparation, you'll be using 0 0.36 grams for your total quantity of 60 ml. So that's how it works in a very simple example. Now let's look at 
what you normally may find right and this is a really good example here all your components are given to you in weight right in grams or milligrams so it, the example states that you have a formula for a hundred triple estrogen capsules right and they are supposed to calculate the quantities of the first three ingredients in grams and then the last two ingredients in kilograms required for 5,000 such capsules. So you have estriol in there, you have estron, estradiol, and they are all in this particular preparations, um, 225 and 25 milligrams. Then you have your polyethylene glycols in there, all 20 grams. So how is it, how much do you really need if you are going to prepare 55, 5,000 such capsules. That's the question. So you're scaling up, obviously. So first, let's determine that factor. So here, the quantity of the formula desired is 5,000. What you actually um, is giving you is for 100 capsules, right? So your factor is going to be 5,000 divided by 100, and that gives you 50. And so your step two then would be to multiply each of the weights or the quantities in there by the factor. So you multiply the amount for estriol, which is 200 milligrams by 50, that gives you 10,000 milligrams, which is 10 grams. You do the same thing for estron, 25 milligrams by 50, that gives you 1.25 grams. You do the same thing for estradiol, and that's another 25 milligrams, multiply that by 50, and that gives you 1.25 grams. Similarly, you multiply the quantity for polyethylene glycol 1450 by 50, that gives you 1,000 grams, which is one kilogram, okay? And then you do the same thing for PEG polyethylene glycol 3350, and uh, multiply the amount there 20 by 50 that gives you one more time a thousand grams which is one kilogram so in summary whereas you needed 200 milligrams of estriol for your formula for the particular um quantity that you're compounding you will need 10 grams and so this is how your or these are the exact ways that you would of each ingredient that you will need to prepare um, 5,000 capsules, right? So you need a lot more than you actually, your formula stipulates, right? So that's how you use the step to go about. And it's really, really easy to do that. Let's look at a second example, right? So here, a number of key differences. Most of your ingredients are specified as a percentage strength, right? So you have percent weight by weight for this particular ophthalmic ointment and so there are a number of ways you could do this the first thing you could do is basically determine the actual weight in grams or milligrams of each component and so you will set up proportions that correlate or relate your percentage strengths to the actual amount in there and then later on multiply each of that by your factor or you could do the second approach, which we'll be using. You determine the final preparation based on your factor, and then you will then use the percentage strength to determine what you will need for your particular preparation. So let's see what that means. This formula is basically for one ointment, and you are required to have enough ingredients for to manufacture 2,000 such tubes of ointment. So based on our examples or our um, approach, the first step will be to determine the factor, right? And so in here, your quantity of the formula is 2,000 tubes, right? That's what you need. And then your the quantity specified in your formula is for one tube, right? So now your factor is a 2,000. And so what you would then do is you do, you multiply the total weight of the ophthalmic ointment, which is 3.5 grams by 2,000. And so now instead of 3.5 grams, you need a total of 7,000 grams. So it's quite a bit more, right? Then what we can do is we would 
then determine exactly how much we need for each ingredient so for your sulfacetamide um, sodium is going to be 10 percent weight by weight so that represents 10 grams in 100 grams and that should be equal to some quantity divided by your total the total quantity of your preparation which is 7000 grams so if you did that you end up with an amount of 700 grams so you need 700 grams of sulfacetamide sodium for your final preparation same way you would actually also do this um, similarly for your prednisolone acetate here you need 0.2 percent weight by weight so like we talked about in percentage concentrations that means you have 0.2 grams in 100 grams and so that is equal to some quantity divided by 7000 and that turns out to be 14 grams so that's how much you would need for your prednisolone acetate then you have phenylmercuric acetate and which is 0.0008 percent weight by weight so we set it up similarly you have that much 0.0008 grams in 100 grams and that should be equal to some quantity divided by 7000 and so that ends up being 0.056 grams or 56 milligrams right and then you have mineral oil in there as well and this is one percent so we set it up similarly you have one gram and a hundred grams that's what one percent weight by weight means and that's going to be equal to some quantity divided by seven thousand grams and it turns out to be 70. now the last thing in there is your white petrolatum and you are supposed to add sufficient quantities to give you seven thousand so the way you know exactly how much of that to weigh out will be to find to take your seven thousand and you will subtract from that the 700 from your uh, sulfacetamide sodium you subtract the 14 grams and then you subtract 0 0.056 grams from your phenylmercury acetate and then your 70 grams from your mineral oil and that gives you 6215.944 grams right so this is how, why, um, how you would go about enlarging your formula. And if you looked at the summary, basically this will give you the exact amount of each ingredient that you need to weigh out to um, obtain your final quantity, right? Which you need for your 2000 ophthalmic ointments, right? So it's quite simple once you exactly know what you're doing. Let's look at the third example, and this actually is how um, you may from time to time come across some relatively older formulas, and these are typically, um, they have their ingredients specified by parts. So basically, it lets you know the relative proportion of each component in the formula, right? So th this is not typically slightly different approach that you may use. And so I just want to share that with you so that you can have a complete picture of what to do. So normally the first thing would be to determine the total parts, which would be the sum of your, the five uh, parts, car calcium carbonate, five parts sodium bicarbonate, and then three parts bismuth subcarbonate. So you have a total of 13 parts. Okay. And these 13 parts represents or correlates with the total amount of product. So that will, in this case, be... Um, equivalent to your 500 grams to some extent okay and now how you calculate each quantity or the quantity of each ingredient in there will be to the to take the parts needed or the number of parts of each ingredient divided by the total parts and then you multiply that by the quantity of product that is required okay so for your calcium carbonate it was five parts in there you have a total of 13 parts so you have 5 divided by 13 times 500 and that gives you 192.3 you have a similar um, situation for your sodium bicarbonate which is also 5 parts in there so 5 divided by 13 you multiply that by 500 which is your total quantity and that gives you 192.3 then you have your bismuth subcarbonate which is actually 3 parts in there so you have 3 divided by 13 and you multiply that by 500 grams so that is equal to 115.4 grams so basically 
the this is how much you would need for fire to prepare 500 grams of um, your preparation right and so as it turns out reducing and enlarging formulas is something that you do routinely now i believe you are fully equipped to do that wherever you find yourself and it's actually as you can see really easy and enjoyable to do so if you have any more questions just stop by my office or send me an email m danqua at csu.edu m d a n as a nancy q u a h at csu.edu